This week, we launched AI for Good Hackathon. And to support that, we've created a free clonable template for you to jumpstart your development. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how this template is set up. Now, this template is set up for Gemini, but if you wanna use OpenAI or Claude or another LLM provider, you can easily do that. And that's because all the major LLMs have a similar fundamental data model. And that is, you've got some text and you've got a role. That is, the user is prompting with some text and their role is the user. And then the model will respond with some text and then their role will be that model or an assistant or whatever it's called. And the history of your chat, your conversation will at least have this structure. So this template will be easily adaptable for whatever model you're using. Okay. Let's start out with the API definition. So we're going to come over to APIs right here, and we're using Gemini. And if you want to use Gemini, you can check out the documentation for this API here. So we're using the Flash model, and we're using the streaming feature. Now, the API key is being passed in the URL string right here. And because this is in bracket, that means that this is a variable that we've set up right here. Now, of course, you want to ensure that your calls are secure and that your API keys are not being exposed in your client. And Flutterflow has a way to route these calls through a cloud function. And you can check out the documentation for how to set that up here. OK, so let's look at the body of this request here. Once again, this is the structure of the body for Gemini. Each provider is going to be different. Now, we've got our system message here, which tells the LLM how you want it to act. So typically, this will be something like you are a helpful assistant and because it's right here that means that this is a variable we've set up so system message here next we have our contents right here which is the context or history of the conversation you've already had of course for your first message it will just be the prompt of the user and we'll look at the exact structure of this in a bit okay so let's go test this call and see the structure of the response so i've got some just dummy text here we've got set up as the history of our conversation we're asking it to write us a story so let's test this call and you can see that this comes in in chunks that's because we're using the streaming feature right here now if you don't see this and you do want to use streaming, you want to make sure you come into advanced settings right here and you process streaming responses is checked on. That tells Flutterflow that you're expecting a streamed response. That is a response that is using the server side events streaming protocol. OK, so let's come back in here and we've got a response and you can see that inside this contents parts, we've got our actual text. That's the words coming back from the LLM. So we just see the and if we scroll down here, cobblestone of the village, etc. And then the other part that we really care about in this template is the role. So this is the role of the model. Now you can see if it's the user, we give it the role of the user. That's the prompt that the user types in. So these are the two things we're grabbing out of there. And we're doing that through these JSON paths right here. We give the name of this text one to segment, and you can see the preview of the response here. And this is coming from this test response here. So it's taking this path and looking at it in the response, the first one up here, and showing it down here, and then the same thing for the role. Okay, beautiful. Next, let's look at how we're handling this data. So we're going to come into our app state variables. And the variable that's doing the lion's share of work here is this chat variable. This is the whole conversation. And this conversation is a list of messages. So a collection of this message data type, which we have set up here. And we've already seen this before. It's just the text and the role. Now it's doing the lion's share of the work because you could see here that We've got our main list view right here, which is just the conversation. And this is being dynamically generated through that variable. So the big picture of the structure of this app is that we're making a call we're getting back a response and then we're doing some configuration and then writing that to this variable. And then this variable is bound to this list. So we're always interacting with this variable and that's what we're displaying. Okay, so we've got that variable bound to this list view right here. And inside this list view, we've got one component, which is this chat bubble component. And we're passing in each of those messages. So remember that chat variable is a list of messages, whether it's a message from the user or a message from the LLM. And so for each one of those message items, we're passing that in to this component right here. So let's double click into this component right here. And this component is accepting one parameter that we've already seen, and that's the message object. Now, if the message that's passed in is the user's message, then we're going to display this user row right here. So you can see we've got this conditional visibility set up that's 
looking inside that message to the role that's this right here and saying, hey, show this if the message object is one from the user. If it's from the LLM, the bot, then show this one. And then of course, we've got the message bound to that text property inside that message. Object. Okay, great. Finally, let's look at the logic. So we're going to go back to that first page right there and down to this prompt right here and into our action flow editor. So when the user submits, we're going to update some of those app state variables. So first we're going to write the prompt that was in that text field to our prompt variable. And then we're going to create a chat object. And that's because the user just typed in a prompt and submitted it. So now we can fill out that first object with whatever they typed in there and the role of user. Okay, then we just clear that text field so we get rid of their prompt in the text field. Then we scroll down. This will be important once we've had a few back and forths and the text is overflowing. So we want to make sure we see the most recent part of the conversation. Then we're creating an object for our model. So we're just initializing the text with an empty string. Once we receive back the response, then we'll write it in there and give it a role of the model. Okay, great. Finally, we get to our backend call. So let's take a look at what we're passing into this API call first. So here we're sending the messages. That is the entire history of this conversation. And this is where that function comes in. So we're passing in a list of messages, which is just that chat variable. And because the API is accepting a certain format, this function serves to just format our conversation in the way that the API wants it. And for Gemini, you can check the documentation here. So for the content field, we need parts, which will be the text of our conversation, and the role. So we're taking in a list of our messages and we're mapping through it and returning a list right here and right here of properly formatted objects and then just returning that. Okay, great. Along with that, we're sending in our system message and API key. Okay, great. Next, because we're using streaming, that is because we check that field in advanced settings to say we're expecting a streamed response, we have these three additional callback functions. Now, when you're not using a streamed response in Flutterflow, you will normally process the response in a conditional that's set up down here. But because this is a stream response, we handle the responses in the on message callback. So this is where the majority of your work take place. So when we receive each chunk, this logic will be executed and it will be executed for each chunk. So when we tested, the first chunk was just that word the, then the next chunk was a handful of words and what that chunk will contain will depend on the API, the service you're using. Okay, so we're receiving back these chunks and we're updating our chat variable. And notice we're updating it, we're not overriding. So we've already created the first user object with their prompt and we've created the models one we just need to update the text inside it because we originally initialized it with an empty string. So right here, we're just running a code expression and passing in our chat variable because what we want to get is we want to get the index to the last item. Because remember that chat variable is just a list of messages. And so we want to look at the last one that was created because that's what we want to update. Okay, so we've got the last message one, which will be that model object. And we want to update the text field in that messages object. That is what the model says, the actual words coming back. That's what we're updating. And we're doing a text combination here because a complete response from the LLM will come in in a number of chunks. So let's say it comes back in 10 chunks. We don't want to keep overriding that because we won't get the text from the previous chunks. We want to keep adding those chunks to the string we've already written. And that's what we're doing here. So this is combining the text that we already have with the new text that came in in this chunk. Well, how are we doing that? Well, this is simply getting our last messages object, the one that we're working with, and getting the text field out of it. Then we're getting the text from the response. And notice right here that you access that chunk through an action parameter. So if I go and edit this right here, it's these action parameters right here that I want. Each chunk is being passed in as an action parameter. And what do I want out of that? I want a predefined path. And that predefined path is that JSON path we set up at the API definition, which is just the text. Okay, great. Finally, we have a scroll action. And once again, this is in case the text overflows our view 
and so we can see that most recent text. Beautiful. We also have some error handling set up. So if we scroll back down to our backend call, you can see on error. And so this is if any of the chunks error out, this logic will be executed. And we're simply adding to a list some text, say, that didn't go through. Try again or refresh. And that's the mod rate. And then finally, we have one action defined here on close, which is another scroll to action to ensure that we can see all the text. Finally, in the top here, we've got some configuration actions set up. The first one is popping up a dialog. This is so the user can test it out with their own API key. Then we've got some logic here defined for setting dark mode. And then lastly, we've got some logic here to reset or clear out this chat sequence. So that's it. That's the free clonable to get you started for our AI for good hackathon. We can't wait to see what you'll build and we'll see you in the next video.